Hi guys, I'm so excited because we're back with another reading vlog. If you guys didn't see my last one and my first one, I read Fourth Wing and I really loved it and you guys really liked me doing the reading vlogs, so I decided I would start and do another one. I'm gonna start reading The Cool Prince by Holly Black. I've seen this all over and you guys know I love a good fantasy read, so I actually started last night and I'm, let's see, 14 pages in and I stopped because I was like, I feel like I should vlog this. I know nothing about this book, nothing about this series, which is always great for me. I love not having spoilers and so I just thought I would start reading this vlog and share with you guys and yeah, let's just get into it. So I obviously read the first 15 pages and I didn't get far, but I'll tell you guys where I'm at right now, or I guess what my initial thoughts are. So I've met Jude, and then I've met her two sisters, Vivi, and then Taryn, I think is her name. And I really like them. I can see the little dynamic going. I am interested because Jude is like a human, and then her sister is the one that is like a fairy or has powers or whatever. So I guess I just assumed that the main character would be someone that has powers, but that makes me believe this is gonna be good. It's gonna go somewhere. Um, and then yeah, they basically just got kidnapped essentially from the home that they were living in because their parents were, which was so sad. I mean, what a way to start off the book. It was the first chapter of the book and it was like pretty rough. Like I did not like that at all. So I am interested to see. I was like wondering if the dynamic with their, with the dad was gonna be really bad, but it like skipped to, you know, a bunch of years later and now they're older and they actually don't have a bad relationship with him. So I thought that was really interesting. Also, just a side note that has nothing to do with the plot. I love these little um, designs on the chapters. I think it's so freaking cute. Like it's giving me the cutest vibe ever. Also, how all the pages are numbered and they have like the little like, I don't know, it's got like a little acorn or a snail or like something so cute at the top. I love that. So anyway, I'm gonna sit here, read the next couple chapters and we're just gonna, we're just gonna be cozy. And they're about to go to like a ball or like, I don't know, some place where all the like high court people are gonna be. So we're gonna see how this goes. Let's get into it. Also, the best way I can like describe the way I'm like envisioning this land or whatever that they live in is giving me like Bridge to Terabithia vibes, if that makes sense. Like that's like kind of the way I'm picturing the like fairies and like forest and world that they're living in. I feel like that's really specific and it's probably not how like a lot of people picture it. But whenever I start getting descriptions, I try and match it to maybe something like I've watched or read. And that is the vibe that I'm getting. I'm getting very like bridge to Terabithia vibe. I've just met Car Cardin, Cardan. Um, and I'm very interested because obviously he's like super mean. So he just like walked by the sisters and they're like scowling and he's supposed to be like the rudest one according to Jude. And she just said, I'm grateful that Cardin has five more worthy brothers and sisters. It's practically guaranteed that he'll never be on the throne. That seems like a little foreshadowing to me. And I'm thinking Cardin is gonna be like the one that she's gonna either like have enemies to lovers with or he's just gonna like be more involved I feel like in some way because the name of the book is the cruel prince and obviously she just described him as the most cruel one and he's prince so I'm getting the plot you know if two plus two is four they're in love <laughs> okay wait now but the other guy that's friends with Cardin Locke locks just like helped out the boy that Cardin just punched and then he like looked up at Jude and winked at her. So now we're getting a little, a little spicy. What is the look for? Okay, this is making me so sad. I'm at the scene where they're like bullying Jude. They just walked by her and kicked like dirt onto her food. And it's making me so sad because she's like, they're like, oh, did you think that you could look like us? Like, do you think you're doing your hair would make you look beautiful? And she's like, in her thoughts, she's like, yeah, obviously I wanna be like them. That's just so sad. Like, she wants to be like them so bad and they're so mean to her. These evil little 
fairies. They're so rude. It's making me sad. Okay, I take back what I said about Carden. He actually sucks so bad. Like, the, if she ends up with him, I'm gonna be so confused. Well, maybe I won't be confused because I've seen worse, but <laughs> they just threw them in the water. They just threw them in the river because she's like fighting back. I'm only on page 50 right now, but she's like been fighting back and he is offering to Taryn. He's like, you can leave your sister in the water if you like come up here. Jude was like, no, I'll only come out and like not join the tournament if you guys bring up my sister with you, like if you guys save my sister. And then he's like, well, would your sister do the same for you? And then, yeah, it's just not good. And then she just left her in the water. Like she chose to not be with her sister. Oh my God, they're making her say, say I forsake my sister Jude, I won't help her, I don't even like her. Oh my God, this is so sad. They're literally sitting there and Cardin said, your sister has abandoned you. See what we can do with a few words and everything can get so much worse. I'm not into this. Oh, he's telling her to give up and she said never. He smelled never is like forever, too big for mortals to comprehend. Okay, it's the day of the tournament. I'm on page 73. What does green what does green gown mean? He just said, not that I'd be the first to green gown her. What does that mean? Is that sexual? Are we talking about, are we talking about something sexual? Ah, see? It is, I knew it, I Googled it. I guess I just didn't pick up on that. Oh my God, he's literally asking her to beg for forgiveness on her knees. Is she going to? He said, your only hope is to throw yourself on my mercy in front of everyone. Do it or I will keep on hurting you until there's nothing left. Oh my God, yes. Here she goes, here she goes. She said, you've gone out of your way to make me feel like I'm less than you, to coddle your ego. I have made myself less, I've made myself small. I've kept my head down, but it wasn't enough to make you leave me alone. So I'm going, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to keep on defying you. I'm going to shame you with my defiance. You remind me that I am mere mortal and you are prince of fairy. That means you have much to lose and I have nothing. She said, I will make sure you lose everything I can take from you on the way down. I promise you this, this is the least of what I can do. I am gagged. She just made a deal essentially with Prince Dane. So he's protecting her from enchantment as long as she is like swearing herself to be his spy. I was not seeing it going there, but I am very interested to see, I don't know, I'm interested to see why he wants her so badly as his spy. Like I feel like this just came so far out of left field, but now she's got a purpose. I was like thinking maybe at the tournament she would like end up being a knight or something, but now we've got a purpose. She's a spy. It does worry me that the, Brandon's clicking in the background. <laughs> it does worry me that the only person who can control her is him, Prince Dane. Okay, it's the next day. I did finish reading up a little bit last night. I started getting really sleepy and dozing off, so I stopped. But the last thing that I read was super sad. I'm on page 120, and what basically just happened is Jude broke into Bal Balkin's house and it was basically supposed to be spying on him to find some form of treason. She ended up seeing Balkin basically like whipping Cardin and like punishing him. And that was really sad. So now obviously I'm getting to see like a little bit more of like where he comes from. You know, people always say like hurt people, hurt people. So like obviously he really, really sucks. Um, but I'm also getting a little bit of backstory on why he might be that way what's going on with him. So that was really sad. That was the last thing I read last night. So now she's about to go report back to Prince Dane and tell him essentially like what she found and stuff like that. So I'm very interested to see where this is going. I like that this is her first little spy mission. Here we are, chapter 13. Let's get into it. I also have a literal tray. I just made my lunch. I made myself a grilled cheese with chips. <laughs> And I feel like such a child right now. Like, I don't know, just having like a grilled cheese and chips for my lunch is so random for me. And I feel like I'm back in like elementary school and I'm drinking an Elani new energy drink. They're the seasonal ones. They're 
the witch's brew ones so they're caramel apple this is gonna keep me up because i was really sad that i was falling asleep last night i was like i hope this isn't because i'm getting bored with the book i hope it's just because i'm getting tired so this will keep me up to keep on reading she just got to this room where she's gonna meet the rest of the court of shadows I'm interested to see what they're going to name her, like what her name is gonna be. Right now, I've only met Roach, who is the first person that I'm meeting. Also, she was just, I wanna say compelled, I don't know why, but she was like, yeah, like compelled that she can't say or speak of anything that she's doing, so she's not gonna be able to tell anyone if she's a spy, which makes me really nervous because I, eventually she's gonna wanna say something to someone or like have to say it to someone in some scenario. So her not being able to do that is not good. Also in the beginning of this book, when I first started, I was saying how I was getting like bridge to Terabithia vibes, like creature wise and like kingdom wise. That's just like what was coming into my head. Maybe it's because of the way that this author is describing the types of like fairies and goblins and toads and like things like that in this book. The way she describes them is the way I feel like my child, like, like my adolescent mind would think of a kingdom. Like a lot of the fantasy books I read now, I feel like they're really, really literal and they're not super out there when, when it comes to describing characters being like, pink and like green and blue and their hair and their eyes and like all of that kind of stuff or like having a tail like i feel like it's like an adolescent way of looking at like a fantasy world i feel like my younger self would have thought up a world that's like this which i really like because for some reason to me it's like comforting if that makes sense she just got home and she met ghost and bomb she met the ghost the bomb and then they're gonna give her her name later. She'll like earn her name essentially. But when she got home, Locke is there and he's like flirting with her. Like he's like, I want you to come back to school. You should come back to school. And he just like kissed her hands or whatever. And she's getting a little flustered. She's getting a little nervous. He leans in. Oh, he's leaning in for a kiss. I'm so confused because I thought Locke was maybe with Taryn, her sister, Tarn. I don't know how to say their names. Especially because Cardin hinted that like Taryn was like sleeping with someone or like had already slept with someone and like she keeps being around Locke so like I'm just assuming that it's him but if he's going for Jude, that's so confusing. Okay, so Taryn is telling Jude that she is in love and that at the coronation, the guy that she's talking to, she like won't say who, is gonna declare himself. I am so interested to see who this is. Oh, uh, what is this? What is this? Okay, she found a little note in the Alice in Wonderland book that she stole, and it's Cardin's handwriting, and it just has her name over and over and over with, you know, blood droplets on it. So he's a serial killer. Actually, he's going to murder her. have gone by and Locke now is like walking Jude home after school and she just is like oh yeah he's been flirting with me and he stops to kiss me before I get home like that just like happened all of a sudden I'm so confused oh my gosh okay Valerian is trying to give her a glamour and make her jump off the top of this tower obviously this isn't gonna work because she has that like Thing over her that protects her. I don't know what it's called. He has her by her throat. Oh, she just stabbed him in the side because he was choking her. Oh my God, she didn't kill him, but she stabbed him. She should have killed him because now things are just gonna get worse, but he was trying to kill her, so. Okay, yeah, why didn't her sister wake her up? Like, I know she's not supposed to help her, but like, she's fake for that. You couldn't have just woken her up a little bit I love this sentence. Cardin just walked up to her and said, you you seem to have cut yourself. And she smiles and is holding her knife and she said, I could cut you too. And then Taryn says, Jude. And she said, she's clearly shocked by my behavior. She should be, my behavior is shocking. <laughs> That's me. Like just this whole sentence. 
She's clearly shocked by my behavior. She should be. My behavior is shocking. <laughs> Why is that making me laugh? Okay, this is such an interesting interaction. Locke is walking over to Jude like right after, you know, she just had this whole stabbing thing. And then before he gets to her, Jude turns to Carden and says, you think I don't deserve him? And he smiles and says, oh no, I think you're perfect for each other. What does that mean? All right, they just had a little party at Locke's house and she was making out with him all night and then she just woke up in his bed and she's got grass stains on it. And so I'm like, girl, did you, did you do what I think you did? I'm so interested because obviously Locke is treating her like so like nice and he's like bringing her around, but I'm wondering like, I don't know. I just don't trust anyone in this group of people. Like I don't trust Locke, Valerian, Cardin. I don't trust any of them. Okay, I'm in the bath. Clearly I'm reading right now. I've got my little book stand right here and I'm just reading and I'm really liking where this is going because it's giving like mystery now like now we've got some plots moving Some characters moving after she went to the party. She got the golden acorn Which I knew was gonna be something but she opened it up and got like a little message in there and it's gonna lead her I think to who killed Locke's mother, what's going on with like Balekin and all of that kind of stuff. So now we're getting like a little bit of the mystery element, but she just decided that she wants to go back to Balekin's office and like look through a bunch of his stuff and try and find more clues, which is giving me a little bit of anxiety, but I'm excited because we're getting like some action in here. Even though I'm still like so confused on the fact that she just like has been making out with him and like that just like, I feel like that just happened so randomly. Okay, she didn't find anything in the office, but now she's stealing this human girl and running out. She's trying to save her, which I'm like, you're not even that great of a spy, so I don't know why you're going through all of this, but let's go. I'm so sad. She just went through all of this work to try and save this servant, Sophie, and at the end of it all, the servant just like jumped off of the horse and I'm so sad though because it's like the servant was just so like her mind had been like so warped you know like she'd been living with magic for so long that when she was back to reality she like didn't want it anymore like she didn't want to believe that she'd lost so much time it's actually so sad to think about Prince Dane just literally made her stab her hand like he literally had her put a knife through her hand just now which was really disturbing but i guess she's trying to like show her loyalty to him i do not trust him like i do not like this man we've got some action here all right she was sleeping i'm on page 200 she was sleeping and valerian is just now breaking into her room while she's sleeping and he's gonna probably try and murder her so oh but she was just told by prince dane to like not kill him so i don't know if she's gonna be able to fend herself here. Valerian just said, do you know what he said when I told him that you stabbed me? He told me that it was no more than I deserved. Exactly. I'm telling you. Cardin is like misjudged and like he, I don't think he likes like any of those people that he's around like Valerian or the other girl. Like I don't think he likes any of them. Oh, he just leapt and tried to stab her. She rolled out of the way. He scrambles to his feet. I pulled a dagger of my own. Do not reveal your skill with the blade. Do oh, she said, if I cannot be better than them, I will become so much worse. Oh my God. She just stabbed him in the heart. Oh no. Oh God. Oh wait, no, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> he stopped speaking. <gasps> wait, I can't believe she just killed him. Like literally after Prince Dane told her not to. I mean, I get it. I guess she didn't have an option, but what is she gonna do? This girl, this girl is insane. Where's my highlighter? Only place I can think of that will conceal him temporarily is beneath my bed. <laughs> I cannot believe the audacity. Okay, she did. Ha she had no option. She had no option, right? It's like fight or flight, and like he was, you know, he was like choking her out. He was about to, he was about to kill her. So she had to get him. But yeah, I guess she had no other option. Like, what was she supposed to do? Just like die? Like, no. I guess she had to get rid of him. But that was just like a lot for me. I'm on page two nineteen, and we're finally getting to the coronation day, which is what I've been dying to get to. Like, I just feel like 
most of this book has been leading up to that. So here we go. We're gonna see what's about to unfold. I feel like a lot of the puzzle pieces, like all of this stuff with Locke's mom and the missions and all that stuff are all gonna eventually connect but I feel like they'll connect at the coronation. Okay, she's dancing with Locke at the coronation, but he just had this weird conversation with her and he's like asking her, like, would you cry over me if I hurt you, blah, 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 blah. So now I'm like, oh my God, is he with Taryn the whole time? And he's just been like, I, I don't know, like why would he be with her sister and her at the same time? I'm genuinely so confused. Maybe to like throw everyone off but now I'm getting so stressed. Yeah, now Cardin is dancing with her, and I think that Locke is with Taryn, which is a little bit sus. I'm so confused as to what's going on, because they were about to anoint Prince Dane to be the king, and then obviously Balkan is like challenging him right now, but I'm still trying to figure out how Jude's dad is involved in this. <gasps> Matic just killed Dane? Oh my god. Well, I guess that answers my question on how he's involved. Oh my god. Now they just had, they just killed Eldred's like wife or lover or whatever. Like Belkin's like literally like, if you don't give me the crown, I'm just going to kill her. And then the king's like, okay, we'll just kill her. Oh my god. Now he just killed the high king. I didn't realize like in three pages, like six different people are dying. Oh my God, they just killed the sister. Oh my gosh, like all of the siblings are taking their own lives so that they don't have to crown him. And the only one that's left is Cardin and he's missing. Okay, it's the next day. I'm at book two. I'm at the part where it says book two. So I've got like a hundred more pages to go in this book and I'm really excited. I can't read tonight so I'm gonna start reading right now because I have to get a couple pages in before I leave and I'm just I'm excited to see where it's going. The last thing that happened is basically they like murder their entire family. Like everyone is pretty much pretty much gone. I was not expecting that. Like I, I don't know what I was expecting but like I wasn't expecting all these people to be already you know what I mean? I'm also like, I'm still shook over Valerian. Like I, I can't even wrap my mind around the fact that she just did that. Like, I don't know. I was expecting that group of like, you know, rude people to be in like m many more books and he's just gone like that. So I'm still not over that. She's helping Cardin actually like escape because he was under the tables, but he's low key crushing on her. She had to take her hair down. So she like let her hair down. He's like, oh my God, you look. And then he just like stopped speaking, but like he's crushing. Okay, well she does have a knife up to his throat now. <laughs> Right as I'm like, oh my god, yes, Cardin's crushing on her. She's like, boom, knife to the throat. Oh my gosh, she's telling him that she killed Valerian? He said, or what? You're not really gonna stab me. She said, when was the last time you saw your, do your dear friend Valerian? Not today, despite the insult implied by his absence. Did you wonder that? He said, I did, where is he? She said, rotting near Maddox's stables, I killed him and then I buried him. No matter how unlikely it seems, you are the most important person in all of fairy. Whoever has you has power and I want power. So she's kidnapping him. He said, I suppose I didn't know the least of what you could do, period. You underestimated her, Cardin. It is kind of sad though, because it's like Cardin is giving absolutely no reaction to his entire family being gone now. And it's, I don't know, I feel like that's showing a lot. Okay, so she brought him to the Court of Shadows and she's got him tied up in a chair. I cannot believe Prince Dane is gone. Like she's now saying it over again and I like actually can't believe that. So many characters that I've met in this book I thought were staying for so long. Like they're all gone. Things are getting sticky. Turns out Ghost is the one who actually in like is the one who killed Locke's mom and they orchestrated that whole thing. And then now they're keeping Cardin as like a prisoner, which I'm very interested in like how long they're gonna be able, be able to keep him. I feel like they're gonna have to run off somewhere. Like I don't feel like they can stay in this 
little kingdom with him as a prisoner because he's so sought after. So I don't know what they're gonna do. Oh my gosh, what a sicko, what a sicko. He's a sick freak. Locke, just, okay, 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 okay. Jude just got home and she's in her room and she's just now realizing that Locke is actually with her sister, Taryn. And they're like, he was the one who was like gonna come forward and get married to her. But I'm like genuinely so confused. I mean, I haven't read past this point, but like, why would he do that? Like why, why? It's not like he was pretending to like Jude. I mean, he was pretending, but like you weren't fake kissing her. You were really kissing her. So like, what do you, what? She said, Cardin's words when I asked if he thought I didn't deserve Locke echo in my head. Oh no, he said with a smirk, you're perfect for each other. Uh oh, she's about to have a confrontation. She says, I wonder if when Locke and his friends laughed, she laughed with them. Oh my God, this is so sad. I challenge you, I tell, wait, she's challenging it. Her to a duel for my honor, which was grievously betrayed. I wanted to tell you, she says. There were so many times I started to say something, but I just couldn't. Locke said if I could endure it, it would be a test of love. <gasps> what? So he proposed to you. Well, the royal family got butchered, so that's romantic. I cannot believe the audacity. I cannot believe Tara knew the whole time what he was doing. This is what's happening. We're getting the truth. We're getting Cardin's truth. It's because Taryn has always been a little witch. Jude is such a little savage. She said, I think you'd love to hit me and I know I wanna hit you. She's like, try she's like baiting her to fight her right now. <gasps> if she like kills her sister right now, I'm actually gonna like scream. Like I will scream. I like, oh my gosh, she's literally about to fight her sister over some, but like, I guess she's not fighting her over Locke. She's fighting her because she was betrayed. Was it fun to deceive me? Did you like the feeling of having something over me? Did you like that he was flirting and kissing me all the while promising you would be his wife? <gasps> this is insane. Okay, she didn't she didn't kill her, but she almost did. I I feel so bad because this is such this is so sad. This is so sad. Okay, as much as I I mean obviously I don't like Maddox that much Ma Maddox, their dad that much, I do feel like he always has Jude's back. Like in certain situations with her sisters, or like I feel like he has a better understanding of her. Maybe it's for manipulative purposes, but like I do feel like in this situation, he's backing her for sure. Which is nice because I feel like none of the characters back her. Like I feel like no one understands her, but he kind of does. Okay, I just highlighted this section because I love it. It's like this whole little paragraph and it's Jude talking to her sister Vivi and her sister is telling her like, you fit in better here than I do. And I just love this paragraph, so I'm gonna read it. Jude is saying, I mostly don't like to imagine the life I could have, the one without the magic in it, the one where I went to a regular school and learned regular things. When the wolves come for that, Jude shall be eaten up in an instant and wolves always come. It frightens me to think of myself as vulnerable, but as I am now, I'm well on my way to becoming one of the wolves. Whatever essential thing, this is the best part, whatever essential thing, the other Jude has, whatever part that's unbroken in her and broken in me, that thing might be unrecoverable. Unrecoverable, Vivi is right, it cost me something to be the way that I am, but I do not know what, and I don't know if I can get it back, and I don't know if I want to. I just love this because it's like showing, like her whole life was obviously uprooted to like be here, and she wants so badly, or at least at the beginning of the book, she wants so badly to have like power and like fit in and stuff, and she does fit in better here than she would in like the mortal world or whatever. I don't know, I just think it's so interesting like her thoughts and like also like her processing like what if I lived there, what if I lived here, what would my life be like? And like she likes her self and her personality better than she is here. Oh, things just got interesting, things just got interesting. I'm just figuring out that Prince Dane, okay this is so confusing for me, Prince Dane and Lirio, who's also Luke's mother, Luke's mother, Locke's mother, had a child and it's Oak. Jude is talking to Cardin like by herself. She's having like a moment with him and she's basically like, why do you hate me essentially? 
and his little paragraph of like why he doesn't like her is actually so sad he's like i hate you because your father loves you i hate you like i hate you because you don't have a brother who boots you up so it's like he hates her because he's jealous of her essentially which obviously it does make sense but she's like, I don't know how you could be jealous of me because like you've basically like made my life here like so much harder than it needs to be. Oh my God. He says, most of all, I hate you because I think of you often. It's disgusting and I can't stop. And then he says, maybe you should shoot me after all. Like he's embarrassed. He's admitting that he like constantly thinks about her. She's kissing him? She kissed him? I love how bold Jude is. I love her. She said, kissing Locke never felt the way that, that kissing Cardin does. Like taking a dare to run over knives, like an adrenaline strike of lightning. Like the moment when you've swum too far out in the sea and there's no going back, only black water. <gasps> okay. Wait, they're like making out. She said, and worse, far worse, I like this. I like everything about kissing him. The familiar buzz of fear, the knowledge I am pushing him, the proof he wants me. Oh, period. Period. All right, I'm stopping here. I've got 60 more pages, but I have to leave now. What just happened is Cardin basically swore himself into Jude's service. So he's going to serve her for a year and one day which I'm very interested to see. Obviously, it's gonna be like the whole next book. I understand Jude's plan. Jude's plan right now is to have Cardin put the crown on Oak and then like take Oak away. I don't feel like this plan is gonna work. It almost seems, I don't know, just it seems too like outlandish that they would actually be able to get him out, but we're gonna see. I've got six more pages left. I'll be back to finish the book. It's Saturday morning and I'm in bed and I've got 60 pages left as I said so we're gonna finish this book right now. I really want to finish this because I am going to Barnes & Noble today so I already know that I'm getting the second one which means that this is a great read. Obviously you could tell by this reading blog that I'm really enjoying it but before I ever finish a book I'm like I have to have the second one or whatever comes after after that so I'm gonna run to Barnes & Noble today and pick up the second book but I've got 60 pages left so let's get into it so right now they're at the feast where basically Jude's whole plan is like going into action so she's trying to steal the crown and put Oak on like the throne or whatever and make him king and then like take him away but Maddox just went out into the hallway and like cornered Jude. Why did I say her name like that? He cornered Jude and now she just drew her sword. I'm always like gagged at what Jude does. Like I was not expecting her to just like take out her sword and be like, okay, let's fight for it. I cannot believe he's actually fighting her though. Like this is supposed to be her dad, even though it's not her dad. I should have known because he's crazy. He rushes at me with such force. Oh no, he just asked her to surrender. She said, you surrender. Oh no. Oh, this is the best line. She said, father, I am what you made me. I've become your daughter after all. Is Locke mentally ill? He just went up to Jude and said, I admit I'm a little jealous to see Cardin parading you around on his arm. She said, I don't have time for this. He said, I liked you, you know, I like you still. Are you a sicko? He said, the thing I like best is how you never do what I imagine you will. For instance, I didn't think you would duel over me. Oh, get over yourself. Like, I just like absolutely love, I just love that Cardin can't lie and he like can't deny the fact that he's into Jude. I don't know, I think it's just cute. He said, have I told you how hideous you look tonight? And she said, no, tell me. And he said, I cannot. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, they just bombed the place? Wait, they just bombed the place. Not me like having that cute little moment and then like... Oh my God, the ghost just shot Balkin. Oh my God, wait, is she gonna low-key put this on Cardin and not Oak? Like, is she gonna trick Cardin into being the king? I will freak out. <gasps> she said, for the next full minute, I command you to not move. Cardin goes utterly so. She said, go ahead, Vivi says to Oak, just like we practice. And with that, Oak puts the crown I crown you, Oaks are always a king, a high king of fairy. His eyes go to BB2. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's pissed. 
Uh-oh, we came up with your code name, she mouse. I hadn't even seen her. Oh my god, the queen is her code name? You're kidding. Oh my god. All right, I'm in the epilogue. That was crazy. That was crazy. Actually, that was crazy. I need a minute to process. I was kind of wondering if she was going to do that to Carden is because... The plan with Oak, like, yeah, it was a plan, but it didn't make sense in my mind. Like, I kept thinking, like, okay, yeah, I guess she can do that, but, like, really? Like, you're gonna crown... I don't know. I guess I was just thinking, like, what would be the plot of the other books? Like, if she crowns Oak and brings him to the mortal world, and then he's gone for seven years. Like, I kept thinking, like, okay, what's gonna go on in those seven years? Is it just gonna, like, skip seven years in the next books? Or what's going on? Makes so much more sense that she decided to crown card in like that makes so much more sense but i'm still shocked jude just consistently has me like shocked okay you guys i'm officially done reading the cruel prince i actually enjoyed this a lot more than i thought that i was going to i really liked this series i think my initial overall thoughts rating everything i'm gonna give this four stars i do feel okay let's break it down actually i love the setting and like the world that this is set in like i just really like like i said it gives me a very like nostalgic like old like folk type of like feel which i think is really nice compared to like other fantasy and stuff things that i read like i love having like the pixies and the trolls and like that kind of thing in here like i love that vibe of fantasy so i really liked this because i haven't read a book like this in so long i also really like the main character a lot i'm used to sometimes when i start fantasy books having a female character that starts off um i don't know very victim-y and just like their mentality and it grows over time and they get like much stronger but i feel like even with jude like even having her bullied in the very beginning of this like i feel like she's always had a backbone and like i don't know i just i really like the main character of this obviously i know she starts off and she does like have great character development within this book but i'm also really excited because i feel like she grew so much in this book and it's just the first one so i'm excited to see where that goes in the second one i also was very pleasantly surprised um with the plot of this book like there were a couple things that obviously like i could maybe guess at and stuff like that but like i loved the ending i loved the plot twist i also loved the mystery aspect of this like it's not just like a plot about like war and stuff like that it had a lot of like mystery when it came to who dane's kid was and all of that kind of stuff like her finding the acorn all of those little things i love like a good mystery element and so i really like that it had that in this book i would love to get Cardin's perspective um, I hope that maybe in other books I do I think it would be nice to like just see a little bit more into like his backstory and his thoughts because obviously he's going to be a huge if not like the main person that's interacting in the second book so I'm very excited to see that overall I really enjoyed it I thought this was a really great fantasy read I actually need to look up and see how many books are in this series maybe i should look right now the second book is called the wicked king and the third book is called the queen of nothing okay yeah so there's two more books in this series which i actually really like like i feel like i'm gonna really like finishing this i'm intrigued and i really loved enjoying this i just love fantasy books you guys like i just love escaping into like another world also like when i was younger i used to read so much fantasy like that was like the majority of what i would read i would read so many fantasy books so i feel like it just again it's like very nostalgic for me and i feel like as you grow up you lose that sense of like creativity or being able to like make up you know fake scenarios like fake worlds in your head and stuff like as you grow up you like don't really do that anymore so it's cool i think that's why i enjoy fantasy so much it's like i'm getting that aspect back but it's like someone else's world that they made up which i just think is so cool so anyway i really enjoyed this book i gave it four stars that is it for this reading vlog i will definitely do another reading vlog for the second one just because obviously i like really like this series and i think it would be fun especially because like i said at the beginning of this none of this has been spoiled for me so i don't know anything about anything and i'm excited to read the rest of the series so i will see you guys in my next video bye guys